it's literally a winter wonderland in here. Check this out. <laughs> Uploaded another one of our classic how-to videos. They're still for sale at hauntedhousesupplies.com and you can buy the DVDs. There's how to create your own haunted house, there's how to detail your haunted house, uh, there's like part one, two, three, and four, there's how to gore, there's how to foam carve, there's all kinds of videos and they're all really good. But we're putting this video online for free. Take it away. Hi, right, we're coming back at you with another video from Halloween Productions. As you know, we've brought you several videos over the years trying to show you how to do marketing, build your haunted house, you know, and everything between. Last year, we made a video called How to Detail Your Haunted House. Well, now we have another video called How to Detail Your Haunted House Part 2. But in this video, it's going to be called How to Foam Carve Your Haunted House. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you everything that you need to know to get started to really enhance your haunted house and do foam carvings and really, you know, create things that you weren't able to create before. Um, number one, we're going to show you some of the tools to use when you do foam carving, and you're going to be surprised at some of the tools that we use to do a lot of the foam carving work that we do around here at the darkness. Uh, secondly, we're going to show you some tips on how to carve the foam, and we're going to create some really interesting things. We're going to create some caves. We're going to create some three-dimensional type things. Uh, and lastly, we're going to show you some of the hard coating techniques that you would use to, to make your foam, you know, once you've carved it, to give it that rock solid finish, whether you want it to be a brock or a boulder or whatever it is. We're going to show you some techniques to hard coat it. And at the very, very tail end of the video, we'll show you some finished pictures. Um, so you're going to actually come along with us here at the darkness, and we're going to show you how we're going to build three really cool scenes. Um, so here we go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to a table and we're going to show you some of the really cool foam carving tools we use. We use all kinds of different tools from you know, hot wire uh, type knives to, uh, believe it or not, sawzalls. We've even had to customize some sawzalls where we weld, uh, welded two blades together to make it bigger to cut through the foam. Uh, believe it or not, we've used weed eaters, electric chainsaws, and everything. So let's go and take a look at the different kinds of tools we're going to use for this project. All right, we're getting ready to start our foam carving project. But the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get our tools together to carve foam. And there's quite a few uh, things that we're going to use. And i got John here with me. You guys probably seen him on our last video. Um, he's going to help me describe some of the tools we're going to use. Uh, one big tool that we have uh, that we don't have room on this table for is a weed eater. John, why would we use a weed eater to cut foam? And we're going to show you that, by the way, us using a weed eater. What, what a weed eater does is it enables us to get some, shake the foam very quickly. It also it, uh, allows us to, uh, it's really messy though, by the way, <laughs> because when you're doing this, you got to make sure you make enough room where you're going to make a big mess, so you got to be expected of that. But it, it works really well because uh, it, like, it'll dig into the foam really good. It's good for like when we're doing cave work or rock work. It's really look good on rocks. So we've got a, a lot of other tools here. We are going to show you the weed eater in action. You're not going to believe it when you see it. We've got a lot of other tools here. We've got a lot of stuff from Hot Wire Foam Factory, which you can now purchase on HauntedHouseSupplies.com. Um, you know, we're selling the stuff that we really think you need. Uh, the Hot Wire Foam Factory has got some incredible stuff. One of the things I suggest that you buy, no matter what you do, is a lot of extra of these. Why, why would you need a lot of extras they of these just, wires? They, they just break or you might lose one. It, it, and you get right in the middle of carving your, you know, whatever you're doing, and you need lots of extra wires, okay? Especially when you're doing big projects like we're doing. 
But just, just discussing a lot of the different products that we use from Hot Wire Phone Factory, uh, this is what would be called like a router. Um, and you can shape this in any kind of direction you want. And then you can kind of sort of go through the phone. And, uh, but it's a slow process um, yeah. using something like this uh, in thick foam because when you get so far in the phone, basically the wire has to kind of sort of reheat and keep going. Um, these tools here you can use to carve lines into the foam. You can go deeper in the foam, things like that. Am I right, right yeah, yeah, basically all your detail work, fine work, and stuff like Yeah, a lot of fine detail type work. Uh, one of the greatest things uh, overall to use from Hot Wire Foam Factory is one of these things. What's this called, John? It's the, the bow. The bow. It's, uh, it, it, it works. You wouldn't believe how much faster it makes your job go, especially when you're doing rocks and stuff because it enables you to cut things off real quick. Right. You're able to glue, glue your rocks and your foam onto the wall. And you can and, make it smaller. And, uh, and it don't take a lot. Like a... When we're using a saw or something, there's a lot of shaking involved and stuff like that. It's so smooth, you just go on. And they got smaller sizes yeah. too, which yeah, are we, great. We can go up to four feet on this. Yeah, we can go up to four feet wide, we can make it smaller. But you can take this, literally, and you can go real deep into the foam and you can cut in and out, make the rocks jagged and things like that. But I don't even think we could do half the stuff that we do without this thing. No, that, that we could just shape down. Yeah, we couldn't hardly do nothing as cool as we did without this particular piece from Hot Wire Foam Factory. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, that you can get from Hot Wire Foam Factory, such as this baby right here. Explain yeah. what we do with this. I don't well, know if Jim can get a close-up of this. It's a giant rasp that's used for smoothing down the rock or shaping to the form you want it. It, it saves a lot of time as opposed to using something like this, a little lower rasp. Right, let me see that. You know, it's a lot more space. You, you cover a lot more space trying to carve all so the rocks out. When you're doing a big project with a lot of rocks and a lot of foam, you know, you could take one of these suckers right here, and it's, I mean, if you ran this across your face, you'd lose half of your face. It'd be pretty funny. Uh, but you can literally run this across the foam, and it'll just take huge chunks off. And if you want to get more detailed, you use the much smaller one. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, that we've got. We've got this other product, another one from Hot Wire Foam Factory, and this is a knife gun. And uh, this sucker is really nice. Why is this nice, John? It's one of my favorites. The reason I like that is it enables you to get in there and in the little areas that you couldn't get into some of the bigger tools. And also in uh, some of the textures it gives just by rip. You can do wood graining with that. You can do all kinds of sorts of things with that. Now some of the other tools that are not as sophisticated, you know, goes back to the old West days, your, your hand saws, and, and even though these other uh, things are really nice to have, you still need these things. Yeah, sometimes there's just, you need, you need, you need a keyhole saw or just you need a regular saw just to finish your cut. Uh, we got some other cool things to show you, staying on the subject of cutting, one of these is invaluable. It's an electric chainsaw because when you're doing big projects, like when we were doing the, the crib, we just took the electric chainsaw and like cut out a big chunk. If you're doing wanting to get that foam down to a smaller piece really fast and you need to take a big chunk of it out, you would use this sucker, am I not right? Right. But one thing when you're using the chainsaw, you've got to always remember you've got to keep your chain clean and then the inside of the chainsaw clean. So we do this by having an air hose close by. That way you just keep on air brushing the air. Uh, every time you use it, you want to clean that to stop. Because, because our, the beads will get in there. They'll get in the motors and jam it up. Yeah. Uh, now, a couple of times, a couple things, like when you're carving foam and stuff, you want to improvise. A lot of times you want to get really deep into the foam and a regular jigsaw, as you can see, if we can get a close up here, okay, the regular blade is only so big. And it won't go that far into the foam because you know the, the saw obviously retracts and, and, and comes back out. So uh, you can't cut very deep. So we've improvised here. This was uh, Jim's little uh, invention. He took two jigsaw blades and, riveted them, and he riveted them together. So now we can actually go really deep into the foam 
and uh, and it really works really nice. But a jigsaw is obviously a nice little tool to have. There's there's other tools too here, like what this is like a heat gun. Um, what you can do with a heat gun is obviously once you're making the bricks and stuff, you can run the heat gun across the foam and it'll melt it some, so it gives it some texture. Right, right, John? Yeah, that's good for like stone and so forth like that. They're really good texture. Now we've got an interesting little tool here. Um, why don't you explain it, John? The, the, all this is is the this is a healthy gun. It, it, we, it shoots uh, low rising foam. Okay, it's important that you use low rising foam to glue your pieces on because if you use the high rising foam, it's going to push it away from the wall. So you want to use the lower rising foam so you have more time to work with it and you don't have to worry about uh, big bubbles coming out from the great stuff. Yeah, one of the things, remember we talked about, um, we talked about the, thank God they didn't get me, but uh, one of the things we talked about uh, was, you know, that, you know, you screw up, okay, you, you messed up, and you need to build that foam back on. Then you take a piece of foam, and you want to glue a piece of foam onto another piece of foam, and then you can sculpt it again. Okay, when you're gluing foam on foam, uh, we use low rise, you know, low rising um, spray foam, and it because it, it really does it here really well, and it dries pretty quick, and it sticks it on. But it, and then you can also use it to fill in cracks, you know, and then you would take something like this, sand it down uh, around the edges. But at the end of the day, um, I think that pretty much covers everything, other than the fact that uh, we have a pair of safety goggles on here. When you are carving foam, you might not think it's dangerous or whatever, but those beads and all that stuff flying around, it gets in your eye, and you know, and you, it's going to be hard to see, especially when you're using that weed eater. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if you're using a hot wire gun or something like that, or a knife cutter, you might not need it, but if you're whipping out the weed eater or the chainsaw, there's a lot of beads flying around. I think that pretty much covers all of the, like the tools that we're going to yeah. use on this project. Um, and then, obviously, your best tool is this video right here, <laughs> because this video is going to help push you in the right direction. But, John, I think we're ready to probably start on the project. Are you ready? Let's go. Here we go. Okay, now that we know the kind of foam we're going to use, and we know the tools we're going to use to uh, carve um, our scenes here that we're going to build in this video, really the next thing to do is really to get a design. You need to draw... Um, your design so when you're sculpting you're sculpting from something okay one of the first things that we need to do before we do any foam carving is we need to do drawings okay we need to you know know what we're gonna carve and you know I just happen to have a few in my hand and you also can see them uh, splash over the screen here right here um, but you know here's our you know our alligator scene with the waterfall we're gonna kinda work on that room Here's kind of a drawing of our snake room, uh, another drawing of our snake room, um, you know, and, and here's a picture of our spider room. And so it's very important that you get really good drawings, so because anybody who's going to sculpt foam, you can't just say, hey, kind of sculpt this uh, bear thing with like uh, a knife in his hand or something. You want to get a good drawing so that you're both, the sculptor and yourself, are on the same exact page. Now. In this video, we're not going to do a whole lot of really detailed uh, foam carving. Like, we're not going to show you how we sc uh, sculpt the snakes and things like that because they are very skilled and they take somebody who's got quite a bit of skill. But there's a lot of things that you can sculpt, even though you may not have a lot of sculpting talent, but you still can do it. Okay, now when you have your drawings, of course you want to turn them into JPEGs or something like that so you can put them on your computer. Then you want to get transparency paper like I have here okay and what we see here is we see uh, the snake drawing that we did and what we did is we took this transparency paper and we printed the drawing on transparency paper then we're going to take an overhead projector like this okay and we are going to shine it right up over here as you can see okay and you see the snake on a big, gigantic block of foam. This is a big, giant block of foam. Now, this isn't the size that we sculpted our snake, so don't get me wrong on that. I'm just trying to give you an example. Here is a front view, and here's a side view. 
So on this block of foam here, you have two, you have four sides to it, correct? So you got your front view, and then you would come over on the side, and you would shine on your side view. And what you would do is you would just take a sharpie, like this, okay, and you got your snake, um, and then you would just start tracing it out, okay? You know, this doesn't take a rocket scientist, okay? So you just start tracing out your snake, okay? Not that complicated, okay? It's actually fairly simple. I'm not going to sit here <laughs> and do the whole thing, okay? But I think you get the picture, okay? So the first thing I've got is I've got the front view, and now I've got the side view that I'm going to put on the side as well so that I know when I'm sculpting the signs what I need to get, which is over here. See, we wanted to have the snake, we wanted a piece to come out. So, you see right here, this, this snake body goes in again, because see, this is a wall right here. Here's the back of the snake, it comes down. Here's the edge of the snake. You know, and these will be the, the corners that come around, and you got his head and the whole shebang. So even if you don't have a lot of sculpting skill, you could go onto a piece of foam like this. You can you can put something on here, and then you can you know it's not you know you can take your you know your uh, carving tools and go in here and kind of round these out, and you could get at least the basics of some kind of image. What is this is best for? Is if you say for example was doing some kind of like Inca temple like we've done here. And you could go find a picture of a real, you know, like say some Aztec type stuff carved in the side of a wall. You could take that picture, print it out on transparent paper, and then the big square section, like say some kind of medallion or whatever, you could shine it up on a big piece of foam. You could draw it out with your marker, and then you can kind of sort of carve it out, and at least you'll have some kind of general image of what you're trying to shoot for. So that's how we would do it here. But most of the stuff we're going to do in this video is carving rocks and caves and things like that. So now that we've got through this part of the section, let's get on to some foam carving. Okay, now that we know the tools we're going to use, we know the foam we're going to use, and we have our drawing, uh, which I thought was really cool, now it comes down to you know building this set. Um, sometimes, even though you're going to do the foam carving, you've got to build a structure to put the foam on, whether it's a, a wall or whatever. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at some of the sets that we've already prefabricated in wood and we're going to get a better idea of exactly uh, how we're going to carve the foam out per the drawings. Alright, now we're in what we're calling the spider temple. As you remember, we're building three different temples, a gator temple, a spider temple, and a snake temple. Well, this is going to be the spider temple. There's going to be animatronics in here, and it's going to be really cool. So what we're doing is, this is supposed to be like um, a cove. Um, you know, it's going to be a cave. That's what it's going to be. And what we've got, as you see the drawings right now, you see there is a um, kind of like a header piece that's going to go up and over the top. And then we're going to cover everything in here with boulders sticking out in all different kinds of ways. And then we're going to create this alcove right here into a really cool, wicked-looking cave. Uh, and then there will, ultimately there will be a big, giant spider in there. So we're going to get started on that. We're going to show you how to turn this into an alcove cave with a really cool header piece design. So now that we have our um, full-blown uh, sets built out the way that we want them, so now let's go into the, uh, the cave room. And let's see how we're going to carve up all of this rock and turn it into a really cool waterfall. Okay, we're in a room that we're building, <clears throat> which we're calling the Gator Temple. Uh, for It's just the name we've given the scene. <clears throat> and the whole idea of the scene is that there is an alligator, an animated alligator, in this particular um, tank. Um, and it's going to look just like the drawing that you're seeing on the screen right now. And we're going to carve this round part into like a man-made um, uh, 
you know, like well or something. And then what's going to be above it is um, a waterfall. Okay. Now what you're probably wondering, okay, is we're going to spray this in gunite. So what we've decided to do is take big chunks of beaded foam. And what we're doing is we're actually, instead of building the scene out, we're actually doing it out of uh, the beaded foam. We're, we're, we're piecing it together. And then, as you can see up here on top, you see that we've laid different pieces of foam up there. And we're going to put different pieces of foam up there. And now we're going to go and go carve them out and start adding more foam to them and make it look like a, like, just like the drawing. And then right in the middle, um, if you can see right there, there's a pump we've already laid in our um, um, plumbing and so right in the middle is where the water will pour over the side okay now what you see here is we want to build these crypts just like you see in the photo right now um, and so what we decided to do instead of build the crypts out of uh, wood and then apply foam which would have been a lot of work we decided to go ahead and take the foam and cut out the holes and you can see the platforms where the corpses will be. You know, they'll be, you know, dead corpses. And then as you see in the pictures, we've got these round pieces. And we went ahead and cut those out of the foam. So essentially, as you can see all through here, we have six um, what are going to be crypts. Okay? They're going to be sprayed in gunite, which is concrete. And um, so right now, all we're really doing is piecing this room together. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start detailing it and carving it out and making it look really detailed. Okay, we've been in here all day working on this room. What we've done is we've built all, everything out. We've cut everything out the way we want it. Now we're starting to glue it and starting to place everything into place. Uh, as you can see here in the picture, you got this slate here, you got this big rock up on top, that's what we're doing up there, we're putting a big rock up there so we can eventually carve that out and make it, make it look more like stone. Uh, that's what we've been doing the, all day long, is just putting all the foam in place and making sure everything's where we want it to be. And uh, the important thing is, when you're doing this, is you got to make sure everything is flat and level and make sure you clean off your, um, your walls and stuff that make sure it's not, not bumpy or anything and make sure it's smooth when you glue the wall or else the foam will not glue properly. Uh, also we got uh, over there if you see we had we spent about a day <laughs> cutting out those uh, holes in the foam but we found that would be easier than having to build it out of wood and place and foam on top of it so we just cut the holes into the big chunks of foam. If you're lucky you can find someone who has a bunch of foam like this. What this is is dock foam that uh, we found this one guy had a whole bunch of it and we bought it from him and so we're using it for this and it works perfect. Okay what I'm doing here is we're gluing all these pieces together, making it look like it's a waterfall here. You see there's a little cove in here. That's where uh, animation's going to pop out. And the way we got it here is we're going to have a sheet of water. So there, the alligator's going to shoot out through the sheet, and they'll be able to scare people. But what we're using to glue all this uh, foam together is we got this Hilti, and it's low foam. It's low rising foam. That, that means it don't rise as much as like the great stuff or the, some of the other products that are out there. So it allows you more time to, uh, when you glue it on, it don't rise as much so you don't have to worry about the glue coming from what you're gluing it to. So it's easier. When you glue it to the wall, you got to make sure you attach it to the wall with a, like a couple screws or something like that or else it'll, it'll come back from itself. But as long as you put a screw in there or two, it should be okay when you glue it. Okay, so, you know, we've been working on the gator uh, uh, temple that we're doing, where we're doing a lot of foam work. And one of the, the residuals of doing a lot of foam work is uh, a lot of uh, foam and trash. As you can see, come on in here with me. We're going to, it's literally a winter wonderland in here. Check this out. <laughs> okay, it is... Very, very, uh, like it snowed in here. And what we've got is we've got John up here, 
okay? And we're working with a weed eater, right John? Yep. And what we're doing is we're really taking the foam down and we're trying to create ridges and a lot of texture in the foam, right? Correct. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to show you exactly um, us working on the foam, taking the foam down with the weed eater, and now you'll you'll get the idea of exactly what the weed eater's for. Uh, Jen, how are we going on this weed eater deal, and how much more do you got to go there? Oh, well, we're going pretty good. I'd say we're about a uh, third way through. We're almost... We, get, we got the big part done. I'm shaping everything out. That's the main part, what you want to do with this. With the weed eater. With the weed eater. You want to use it to shape the shape you want. Then you can come in with a fine tool like a rasp or a, maybe a hot, hot knife or something and do some detail work on it. Okay. Why don't you uh, show us, um, maybe like on this wall right here, how we'll, we'll, we'll kind of make it look a little bit like this one here. and We're, we're taking the flat foam. And we're turning it into well, you want some textured foam. All right. Here we go. When you're uh, sculpting rock here, have you seen? I already done some samples. Uh, you can pretty much do whatever pattern you like. Uh, you see here where I drew out the pattern before I actually started on my rock, and then I just kind of just made a groove. The tool I use, I like using when I'm doing real detailed rock, is this uh, rasp. Uh, if you can find one of these at the hardware store, they're only like three or four bucks. It's one of the best tools ever because when you dig in this foam, see how easy it just goes where you want it. If I want the line, line a little thicker than what, what it's going, I just switch sides. Keep switching sides. Then you got your kind of your shape of your rock, what you want. And then you got to start shaping the rock. You got to always remember, most rocks aren't flat, so you got you got to dig in them and kind of shape them so they look like rock. And what I do is I like to put little gouges in them, and then you just smooth the gouges out. And it blends in. Before you know it, you got a stone rock right before your eyes. Real simple, real easy. Anybody could do this. You just gotta have a little imagination, you know. If you have a picture of us, look at pictures of rocks. Look at different types of rocks you want to use. Uh, that's a, you know, go to the library and decide what type of rock you want to use and then use that as a reference while you're carving or type of stone you want to use. Okay now we're going to show you how to make some slate looking rocks and, um, and here's the point on this particular scene right here we've got this door jam and if you look at it right now, I mean, it's just kind of level and we'll probably put a curtain in here. But because I want to go the whole nine yards, I decided that what I wanted to do is I wanted to put bricks all the way around it so it looked a lot more uh, realistic. So we've taken a bunch of pink foam and we've cut it into these little blocks here. And we have our hot wire bow. And what we're going to do, we're going to knock this out real quick. I'm going to make these uh, bricks and I'm going to show you how to do it. And then John's going to screw them on 
and he's going to glue them on. And what are you going to glue that on with, John? This is a healthy foam. It's a low rising foam. Right. You want to make sure you use the low rising foam because the great stuff and everything will expand too much and it'll push it away from right. the wall. Right. Right. So let's make sure we get that done. Now, after we're done putting all these bricks on this little piece right here, John's going to take a heater type heat of gun, heat gun, heat gun, and then he's going to zap them all so that it makes them look a little bit more pitted and stuff. And I got my little assistant here from our last how-to video. We got Riley, and he's going to be delivering bricks to us. Right, Riley? Yeah. Okay, you ready to go? Okay, so John, I have already made a couple. So I'm going to hand these off to you. And um, and so what I've got here, like I said, and you see the stack right here, um, <clears throat> one of the things you want to do is you want to take the, the a whole sheet of pink foam and run it through a, a table saw. And you want to cut these, okay, into the pieces that you want. It'll make life so much easier. And I got my hot wire gun going real good. And all I'm going to do, real simple, is I'm going to put my hot wire knife into the rock. Now you can see... I'm taking it out on the corners, okay? And I go up and down. When I get into these corners, I gotta take a lot of that corner. Okay, so I got everything angled, if you can see. Okay. So what I've got is a bunch of chipped away edges. And you want the things like this. I don't know if you can see this real good, but you see how I got these pieces coming up and over. And we definitely want to dig right into the side. We want to take out the whole thing. Okay. Be careful of the hot wire because it is hot. And you got to watch out for the cord because you get cut right through the cord. So we want to get rid of all edges. Okay. And then I'm going to make every one different. Take it out. We've got a nice little rock here. Now me... I don't like the back edges because you see when you put them on, you, now I can see it's nice and smooth on the side and I can see those edges on the back and to a perfectionist like me, that's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a little bit less on the back side, not as much. Okay. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take out these straight edges. You see how straight they are. I might dig one way in there. See? How's that look? Pretty good? Now we got to take this side out. And the cool thing is, this doesn't take that long. Okay? We're getting there. we got one more edge here. And, and go deep on some of it. And go crazy. So now we got this little piece here. Okay, now John is going to take a heat gun and he's going to make it look, you know, pitted and things like that. But what you can do, though, you got to be careful, is I'm going to take this hot wire thing and I'm going to dig into it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. And go in and out. Then I might take, come back out and then take. See, now it looks really chipped up. Okay. So we're going to take these, we're going to start screwing them on the wall. Uh, we're going to do, what, 24 of them, John? 24. And so um, when we get done with all 24, um, then we're going to uh, show you what to do with the heat gun. Oh, hey, how's it going? While Larry's over there uh, cutting the bricks, I'm over here, I'm going to screw these um, blocks on. Okay, it's important when you're screwing these blocks on, or anything of this matter, especially of this, this archway, make sure you have everything, you have enough space, you want to start from the bottom and work your way up, okay? So I got these screws all prepped, prepped here, you got a screw in there, then you got to take this low rising adhesive, healthy, put it on the back, make, don't be scared to put too much because you don't want it to fall off. You just put it on there like that. Real simple. Just throw a screw in there. Screw just to make sure it falls off. It don't fall off. You can always come back once it's dried. Once the glue's dried, you always can come back 
and take the screw out of there and you can rasp over a little bit uh, and you can hide it real easily. Uh, don't worry if you get up here and one of your, the good thing about foam is when you're carving foam it's real easy to cut especially if you got a hot wire. You just take the hot wire and cut it to size and stick it up there so it's no big deal so don't worry if you have all these cut blocks and you're worried about not having a, the right size I mean it's too easy to cut foam so have fun with it okay as you can see we've got the whole thing framed in and my last piece just doesn't fit so you know that's the beautiful thing about foam I'm gonna try to take some off and I'm still going to be creative. And by the way, I highly suggest when you do this kind of stuff that you wear gloves or something because this hot wire thing will really hurt. Still doesn't fit. Let's take a little off this end. I need to get some of that out of the corner. You now, and I've made all these bricks really weird and different. And whatever. Let's see if it now. And that's the other cool thing about foam is you can kind of jam it in there. Still doesn't fit. It's all okay. Just gonna take a little more out. Look good now. And it fits. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hot gun to this and we're gonna um, pit it up a little bit and it'll be ready to, for hard coating. All right, now that we got most of this, uh, all these bricks up, now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to blend all this together, take some of the hard edges off, and make make the brick kind of just blend together and look more natural. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a heat gun. You just come in and takes a minute to get it hot, but once it gets going, if you see uh, the foam just shifting. I'm just molding it the way I want it, want it to look. I'm just using the heat gun to do my sculpting for me. This is a really easy way to get texturing and get different looks out of foam without having a car. It's just really up to yourself how you want to look. Just take all the flat, flat surfaces, hard edges off, just blend it in. Well, I'm going to finish doing this and we're going to go see what Larry's up to. He's in the middle of another project. Okay, so while John is over there finishing our archway of slated stones, um, I'm going to work on this project over here. As we talked before, it's very important that you get drawings, first and foremost. And we have the drawings, um, and this is just another tip for you. This drawing was hanging right here on this sprue. Um, so every time somebody comes over here, there's no confusion on what something's supposed to look like. Now, as you can see, this area right here is basically done, but we're missing a couple things out of our drawing. As you can see in our drawing, we have a step, our uh, kind of like uh, something, you know, we're going to put a statue here, but we don't want to put it on the ground because that would just look out of place, it would look stupid, it wouldn't be like that in a movie. And so whenever we're doing something around here, we want it to be as realistic as possible. So we're going to make this step right down here, and it's actually really easy. So what we've got here, and this was actually very simple. I had Jim cut me three pieces of foam. Let's see if they fit. Yeah, they fit, barely. Bring me, I got my assistant over here, Riley. So we got another piece of foam, and as you can see, it's a little thinner. Slide that in. Now we also got another piece of foam, a pink one. In there. So, wouldn't you say that looks just like you'd see in any kind of mausoleum or or whatever? We've got three-tiered step. Now, the only problem with this that I can see is it doesn't look old enough. It doesn't look chipped away enough. 
and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do to this right now is we're going to take our hot knife and our uh, bow and we're going to age it up, chip it up, put cracks in it and so on and so forth. And then this part will be ready to go, waiting for a statue. And then we got to do this back wall. So I'm going to get working on that. So now we got our our platform in where we're going to put a statue. You know, obviously it doesn't look the greatest. I mean, because it looks like it's brand new. So I've got my hot wire knife um, from Hot Wire Foam Factory, and I'm just going to take it on these edges. And I don't want to eliminate all these edges, okay? You know, you just want to eliminate some. And I'm just going to take it on along the sides, and then I'm going to drag it in a little bit. And then I might make it a little bit more pitted, okay? And then I'm going to just take a little bit out, okay? I'm going to come farther down and take out a bigger chunk. And look at this. See this little, uh, we'll call that an island. Okay. So I left like an, like an island. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to come down a little farther. We might take out more. And again, let's leave an island. And let's take out a big piece. And let's go into the foam. Let's go down and then see. So we've left a little island. We've carved into a deep. Okay. We could take our hot wire foam thing here and take out more of the ledge. We want people to know that this was a ledge. So we don't want to take out too much. Okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> we're you know chipping up the edges obviously it doesn't look good here but what, what we should do here is probably take the, um, the heat gun and heat gun it and melt it away a little bit but uh, so you know we're just gonna sit here and play around with it now another thing you can do too is we can go into the center here and we can take out a big chunk in here and you want to like get it tiered Okay, so like maybe something heavy hit that. Okay, we want it to look natural. Maybe right in the middle, it's a little deeper than anywhere else. So, what we're doing is we're just kind of sort of making like a, a chunk of it missing. Now, when we're done with this whole thing, it's going to look really good and it's going to look really cool and then when it's hard coated and painted, that's when the magic will really happen. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get John over here and I'm going to get him to finish this and we're also going to put some bricks on the back and then this whole section will be done. When you, This is one of my favorite tools to use um, because it's real easy to take chunks out of the foam with it. You know, this is supposed to be an old ruin, so we got to make it look like it. this thing's a couple hundred years old. In order to do that, we're going to have to take edges off, kind of break break this uh, steps up a little bit. You know, just, just kind of be sporadic. Try not to be too uniform when you're doing this. Because if you're too uniform, then it don't look real. It's going to look fake. So you want to try to be more sporadic with your cracks and with your uh, holes that you put in your uh, brickwork. So when you're doing brickwork, make sure it's sporadic and don't, don't be too uniform with it. Now cracks, when you're doing cracks, start from you either go from a stress point or from where there's a chunk taken out and you just kind of wiggle your knife back and forth as you're going same thing now you now you see here don't look like that that's deep enough to take it but when I come back with a, a a hot gun or a heat gun that will open up and that those cracks will show real nicely. Yeah. 
All right, I really like this ledge here that we put in here. It's going to look good. Uh, one thing Larry wanted was some bricks in the back of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to rasp um, some bricks. And as you can see, I took, I took a, a straight line and a marker, and I just put my lines in there so I know where I want to go, and then I just start doing it. When you're rasping, you always want to use the edge, the edge of the rasp. You work both sides. You want to get a rough, kind of rough out your lines at first, and then you can come back and do your bricks however you want. How this uh, bricked out, now I'm putting detail into it. I'm using a wire brush and a rasp. As you can see, I'm going into it with real, real deep grooves, and then after I go with a wire brush, I come back and smooth it out with a rasp. It's real easy, real simple, and it's a good look. I should be done with this in a, in a, another 10-15 minutes, and then I'll we'll go to the uh, steps, and I'll show you how to put some cracks in there. Okay, now that I've uh, pretty much done with the bottom, now I'm just going to finish it off here, put a few cracks here and there. Remember, come from the corners or the stress points. Just put a few cracks here and there. You know. Some people like a lot of cracks in their walls, some people don't. Real simple way to do cracks though. Hot wire form factory is where you get these. Okay, John left me to finish this project because he's going to prep another project. But I wanted to show you because it's almost done. If you can get a little closer, you see these uh, these cracks that John carved in here. See, I put this heat gun, and they just open right up. And then here, you want to just try to get some swirls in here. Take these edges off. And you want to try to get deep on some parts for the. Uh, when you put hard coating on it, you want it to show up. See, we're just leaving some high spots, some low spots. Let's see, watch this crack again. See if we can see that crack. Just open right up. We're going to come over here where we've carved in. We're going to open up these cracks. I think this is about ready to go, but watch these cracks up here real quick. Can you see this one? Just open right up. So I think that um, about does it for this scene. The next step is to hard coat it and paint it. Now a lot of these cracks and stuff that we've put in the, the walls and stuff, they're really going to look awesome when we get an airbrush artist in here and we airbrush them and we accent them. And that's what's really going to make it pop. We're going to put a few vines on and things like that and this, this is ready to go. Another really important step in finishing this project right here is to go ahead and run over everything with the hot uh, gun. Because when, it, when, it, when John was scraping it and rasping it, he left huge streaks of foam. And if we shot that with hard coat, it would look really bumpy and rigid, and it won't look like real rocks. So you take your, your hot gun here, and you just go ahead and run over all those indentions and scrapes that he made. And we're basically just melting them all together. And then we can leave the gun on a little longer, and then we can make a nice little pit. But the bottom line is we want to get rid of all of these little 
beads of foam because they don't look natural. So we have to run over the whole thing with the gun, especially in the gaps. And this will kind of sort of melt the foam together. And then when you run your hand across it, everything looks nice and smooth. Okay, now one of the things, as you can see, this is like an, uh, an aquarium back here, okay? We're going to put like a snake or something like that in our queue line, okay? When, when we, f we had these aquariums that we're already in, we went ahead and put the blue foam right over the aquariums. And for example, when we knew right where the aquarium was, it was like here, we went ahead and only made a small space that you can see into the aquarium. Obviously what we want to see into the aquarium is like three times that number. But we only cut that part out so that when we started making these chunks and these pieces and these layers that we wanted to see the aquarium, we had to have room to carve down, okay, and up. So whenever you co say cover the area that you want to display something or that you want something to shoot out of, you got to start with a much smaller hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that you've got some kind of snake, a snake animation. So you've got a pretty decent sized snake. So we obviously want to do something very similar to this right here. Okay. So well, all we're going to want is a, is a circle about so big. So what we've done is we know that the snake is on the other side. We know how much space that he needs to get his head through in his motion. And we know it's roughly this big, and that's exactly where the snake's going to be. So the snake, we know he's mounted right behind here. We want to draw out enough space for that snake head to get out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle. Then we're going to take a hot wire knife. We're going to cut this circle out so we know that we have enough space for the snake to get out. Then we're going to start carving it up and making it look like these walls. So I'm going to get John to fire up the hot wire knife and then we're going to make this look like those over there. Okay, the first thing I'm going to want to do probably is just go ahead and cut right through the foam. Right down to the... Then I'm going to go across. You know, the best way to carve this kind of thing right here is not actually on the wall. You might want to take your foam and put it on the wall, like say over your plywood, where you know for sure that the, say the animation of the snake is going to be. And then you want to take this foam off the wall, okay, so that you can actually do what I'm doing here and take your hot wire gun or your knife and go all the way through it. You can also do this with a sawzall or whatever. Okay, so now we got our, our hole. And yeah, I know it's a funny looking hole, but it really doesn't matter because I mean you're gonna come in here and you're gonna start taking pieces out of it. In and out. Real simple. I know John, he was showing you how he kind of sort of cuts in and out. And you can go down farther. And I'm looking at the phone, making sure I don't go all the way through it. There you go. Looks pretty good. You know, obviously you want to get nice and jaggedy. And I'm showing you this because I'm trying to show you that uh, pretty much anybody can do this. Now you might not be able to do it as 
as good as somebody who's really good at it, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. One of the things you definitely want to do is you want to get slanted on this phone. And then, as you can see, like what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get way out here. And you see, I really like this hot wire thing because it's got these gaps in it, and so you can make lines and stuff like that. But you always want to, you definitely want to get at a slant, and you want to try to make as many cuts and moves and grooves as you can. Watch it, this stuff is hot. So, it's starting to look pretty good, I think. I'm going to have to cut some more out. It's starting to look pretty good. Hey Larry, how's things going here? Uh, you know, I'm taking this hot knife and I'm... You know, uh, when you're doing this, there's another way you can do this too. And with the if bow? You, yeah, with the bow. If you don't have, but the only thing is, like, when we did these, we had the glass behind here, so we had to use the knife. Right. So we weren't able to. But if you got a hole to where you got plenty of room, you can just take your bow here. Well, how about we show them that, and I'll move out of the way. All right. Okay, when you're doing this, all you're doing is rocking it back and forth. Try to hold it here. We're going way up there. We want this crack to look like it, the monster Weber's coming through here. You know, really cracked a big hole in this thing. And you're just, just like that. There you go. And there you go. Okay, see, these made some nice little cuts here. Now, one of the problems you see with mine is this still looks too much like a... So I need to come in here and take... Take some of the roundness out of it. Right, John? Yeah, you just got to remember, you don't want it too perfect looking or too round. Right. Then it starts looking more man-made. Let's take the, the backs out of it, especially the... So, you're right, we need to come in here, and then take some pieces out of it. Which... Here, you want to work on your side, John? Then all you got to do is come in here and just give it, give it a little texture, real quick, and you can start, you can start forming where you want your cracks. This is where I'm going to have a crack here. So Wherever you want to put something, if you want to, right here, you got a crack here, so you want, might want to go crack somewhere not real close. You want to look, want to look more random. And remember, we talked about with the the heat gun, we'll spray that heat gun right in those cracks, and it'll open them right up. And that's a good way to. You know, you just give it good. Real quick. Remember, you don't want this too round. You don't want it too perfect. Like I said, this is one of the quickest ways to do this, though. With this hot wire knife. This is one of the best tools I've had. Uh, I love this thing to death. You can do just about anything. Like that. What was that? Hot wire foam factory. <laughs>
And you can actually purchase all this stuff on hauntedhousesupplies.com. We sell all the tools that you see here, uh, all the things that we're doing, except for the weed eater and things like that. But all of these tools that we're using to sculpt everything in the darkness, you can find on hauntedhousesupplies.com. Make sure you don't burn me there, John. Uh, I'd like to try to burn you later. But... I said just. That's pretty much it, you know. Just put cracks wherever you want them. You want them to look. I think that you get the idea uh, when you look at you know what we've done with the blue it looks really good it's obviously really refined we're going to go back in with the heat gun we're going to open these cracks up a lot and then of course we've already shown them how to do the bricks and the rasping I mean obviously you need those those tools with the with the really steel bristles to you know shake it up really good but what was done here on this blue foam I mean it was strictly the heat gun strictly the heat gun putting all these waves and, and lines and this was the hot wire knife and as you see we've done a whole bunch of cracks but you get the idea now you got your uh, scary uh, animation or whatever flying through the wall and that's a great way um, to make cracks and busted up walls for your haunted house One of the things we showed you in the other room, I was taking these uh, pink foam um, blocks and I was kind of sort of carving slate look. So what we've done here, as you can see, is we've covered um, a whole entire wall with the pink foam. <clears throat> then what we've done is you'll see all different size pieces of foam. You've got long pieces, you've got big giant pieces, You've got small pieces, you've got nice square pieces, and exactly what we showed you before, you take your hot wire, okay, and you cut it out, and then you can go in and out of the foam to make slate pieces. So if we look over here on this wall, <clears throat> you'll see big piece, little pieces, another big piece. You'll even see where we've taken two pieces and put one on top of the other to get, you know, it to come out of the wall farther. You see you know, long pieces, um, we're turning them up, the, you know, vertical, horizontal, every which way you can. And to get this kind of look in the foam, you've got your hot wire <clears throat> bow, and you're going in and out, and you're moving it side to side, side to side. You can go kind of in, then back out, then down, around, and you got to make sure you take these edges off, okay? Now, when we hard coat this wall, it's going to look like a slate rock wall, and it's going to be pretty cool. So that's how you do slate, um, <clears throat> and the, the first thing I suggest you do is you get your pink foam, you cut it down with a uh, table saw, and then you just start making all your pieces. You make all your pieces, and you start putting them on, and you got to get creative, you know, sideways, you know, vertical, up and down, whatever it is make every piece look unique as you see with this piece right here you know obviously it started off much thicker and we went down really low and then we came up really high and uh, that gives a lot of texture and a lot of uniqueness and doing this is really no different than when we did it on a smaller scale in the other room we're now going to show you how uh, we're going to carve this whole set of catacombs uh, from start to finish. Uh, what you see behind me is a pink wall, but actually uh, what we did is we pre-built our catacombs out of wood uh, before we applied foam to them. And you have to remember when you uh, build something that you're going to uh, carve foam out of, you have to build it big enough to incorporate the two inches or four inches or even a foot of foam that you're going to be putting over it so that uh, when you uh, decide, uh, oh, yeah, everything's done, you want to put a body in here, it's not too small because you added all this extra uh, foam onto it. So 
Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we had previously, before we had coated the whole thing with pink foam, we had put pink foam inside the catacombs, and then we sheeted over the whole thing, knowing very well that we were going to cut out these catacombs afterwards. So we're going to start by cutting those out now. Hi, I'm Dave, and I'm going to be cutting out the catacombs here in the temple. Okay, it looks like Dave finally got everything uh, cut out. It's, a, it's quite a chore actually to do it, but, uh, but this is the right way to do it. It looks the best in the long run. And you don't have to necessarily be worried about getting it perfect, because you can, uh, John actually is going to show us later how you can use a rasp to smooth out some areas that you need to smooth out. you got to remember this is going to be rock anyway, so you're going to be gouging it and messing it up and then hitting it with the heat gun to make it look like rock anyway, so it's not necessarily going to be a problem if it doesn't look perfectly square uh, when you first cut it out. Um, so the next step uh, that we're going to do here is we're going to uh, create a trim work like a rock trim work uh, around the whole uh, um, catacomb here to give kind of a custom carved uh, thing like in this temple they they valued who was buried here so they trimmed when the and did the trouble of trimming out these uh, catacombs. So uh, Dave is going to get on uh, putting all the trim up now. So yeah, I'm putting the trim up so that way everything looks flush and uh, that way it gives it a nice border, nice look. Like he, like he said, he took uh, the old catacombs, they took time to, you know, these are people they honored and whatnot, so it's going to make it look nice. And We'll come by and match everything up with uh, using a heat knife and uh, a heat gun. Everything will match up and it'll look like stone when we're done carving on it. Using a foam adhesive made by Hilti. And then we use uh, three inch screws to put these in. You don't need a screw gun. This foam's real soft. stone look, uh, kind of ch chop it up and give it a roughed up look. And I'm using a uh, electronic hot knife. texturing with a heat gun. Okay, this is one of the easiest things to do as far as rock texture. Okay, when you're doing this though, you want to tilt your gun at an angle and almost touch the foam so you can give it that hard edge when you're putting it on. And if you want to go the opposite direction on the other side, it gives the same then you kind of feather that down. 
blend it in. Same thing if you're doing it on a flatter surface, same thing. You want to edge, then you want to kind of wiggle it around. There's no, no set way of doing this. In any way, you know, you do it, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, looks cool. But you gotta remember, when you're going, you don't want to start doing X's and O's with it. You want to kind of go with the flow. You know, you want all your, uh, squiggles kind of go in the same direction. Just like I'm going here. That's it. Easy. Okay, I want to show you a little problem we ran into here. We, when you're doing this, you have to do it, go in layers. Well, well, right here we have like three layers of foam. If you zoom in here, you can see where we have three layers of foam, and the foam not quite. You can see right here the lip is sticking up, and we need flush. So in order to get flush, got our trusty rasp here from. Hotwire.com, hotwirefoam.com. You get the trusty rasp, rasp. Get in there. Rasp it down. You see, it's nice and even. Okay, now we're going to give you a couple more foam tips. You know, you see this pillar right here? It's kind of a unique looking pillar. Uh, it's not half bad. You notice I've got this little block thing on the top, which I'm going to cut down a little bit because it's a little too big. But <clears throat> these are just regular blocks of foam. I cut them with a chainsaw, and I cut them down to the size that I want it, and I put a bigger one on the bottom, uh, you know, a thinner one on the top, the cap in, you know, this pillar. Now, if you come over here, you see we've done a little, something a little bit different. We've taken this pillar and we've cut the top off of it, chopped it off. So see, this one is not going to get the cap that the other one got because one's broken and one's not. But here's a really good tip for you. So I bought this pillar from somebody and, uh, and we had it laying around the shop and uh, we were making this scene right here for a display and I said oh let's cut it in half um, and that's a great thing to do you can take these pillars you see we cut this thing directly in half and so one pillar became two pillars okay so if, when you can pick these kinds of things up a lot of cases you'll think hey I just got one pillar I don't have two no as you can see in this scene right here we've got two pillars another thing I'm going to show you is you see right here where you can take whole pieces of foam, okay, and you can make these layers, kind of like we did with the floor, okay. We did the floor, you know, we did multiple layers of the floor. Same thing here. You you get you got a bigger piece of pink foam there. You got a blue piece here. When this is hard coated and painted, um, it's going to look great. We took the uh, the heat gun. We put little waves in it. Now. This might be, you might think, is a little complicated. But I've got a little Sharpie, which is great. As you can see, the Sharpie lines, all this was was a nice thin piece of pink foam, and it was traced out, okay? And then we took our hot wire knife, and we just cut it out. So now we've got this little neat decor piece. Then we've got this big tablet in the middle. We're going to do a really neat design in the tablet. There's some other things in this room that I want to show you. Let's walk over here. You'll see this was, you know, obviously blue foam. We got big giant cracks in it. Um, now we're going to be displaying some reptiles and whatnot. So we wanted to do these neat looking cracks. So, you know, it looks like maybe there's ruins and then the, the animal is actually supposed to be there. Now we actually came up with this really cool idea. We took whole pieces of white foam. As you can see here, we literally put it right on the wall, and then we took a chainsaw and we cut out our pattern, okay, that it's up and down and all around. Then we went in with our tools, like we've shown you over and over again how to use, and we put in our, our lines and so on and so forth. Obviously, 
this was supposed to be some kind of trim to this wall, which is now uh, crumbled away. Um, last but not least, I'm going to show you another thing over here. Um, you can see where we've actually taken pieces of blue foam, and we've actually cut them out in pieces. we got one over there, one over there, we have another one over there. And what we've tried to do is we've tried to make it look like the rocks have collapsed down on um, each other. Again, you see the Sharpie? The Sharpie is what drew out everything on the wall, and then we went in and carved it. So when you're trying to do something foam, make sure you take a nice Sharpie and draw everything out. Because whatever you draw on here, even if I draw a happy face, okay, it's not going to matter because we're going to hard coat right over that. And that's the beautiful thing about foam. So, Okay, here's a foam carving tip for you to really help you out when you're carving your haunted house. When you're carving foam, especially this really beady white foam like this, as you can see, it makes a huge mess. In fact, sometimes when we're using the weed eater and some other things, it could be six inches, a foot deep in here, and it is a mess and is almost impossible to clean up. But out of the blue, we came up with this great idea on how to clean it up. Uh, first, you have to sweep it up, of course, but if you want to get it all nice and clean, uh, instead of using a shop vac, which is real little and it takes forever to do, I came up with this idea. This is a typical leaf vacuum blower that you would buy at the hardware store. I paid a whole $60 for this. Let me tell you, in the first five minutes, it'll be worth every dime. Um, and basically, you turn it on. <laughs> One minute and it's completely clean and, it, and it's not strong enough to suck up screws so it doesn't ruin it so it seems to be uh, the perfect thing for cleaning up foam. Okay, we've showed you all kinds of things on this video. We've showed you how to build caves, weedy, the kinds of tools you need to do foam. Uh, we've just showed you so many things. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to wrap it up for this video. But before we go, we're going to discuss two things. One, we're going to show you how to make wood grain um, out of foam. And, but before we do that, um, at the tail end of this video, when you're looking at the credits, we're going to show you pictures of some of this stuff finished and painted. And we hope you visit us here at the darkness, and uh, you can see it firsthand. So before we go, though, we're going to show you just one more thing. We're going to show you how to make uh, wood grain out of foam. So what do we do, John? Okay, first thing you do, you want to use this RAS that we get from Hot Bar Foam Factory. This gives a good texture on it. It actually, actually, when you uh, rough it up, it actually gives a look of rough cut cedar, if you look at it. Rough it up real quick. Break the edges off a little bit. One of the things that you would really want to do with this kind of look is if you're trying to do like an old pirate ship and you want to put knots and holes in it or maybe like uh, where a piece is sunk or whatever and you really want to um, have a Hollywood looking you know, style uh, wood, this is the way we would do it here at Halloween Productions. This is the second thing. Then you take your, I'm going to make this look like a broken off piece of wood. First I'm going to just cut it off. It normally would. Then you take this, and if you watch, it gives a nice wood grain look as you're doing that. Like it's broken off a piece of wood. See that? Come back and then you put in your wood graining. Then you might go to the middle of it, put it a little knot.
We'll join that together in a second here. You know, if you're wondering about <coughs> wood grain, best thing to do is just pick up a piece of wood. You know, look at the wood, get different way the grains of the wood go, and just kind of copy that. That's the best way to do it. And there you have it. Piece of wood. <laughs> You know, I'll tell you, there's so many different things you can do with foam. Uh, <clears throat> when you're trying to build your attraction, and specifically this video for Haunted Houses, um, you know, when you think of Universal and Disney and all these attractions, and you think about these big over-the-top scenes and things like this that they have, I mean, this is being carved out of foam. Now, a lot of the detailed stuff that you saw in the darkness, like... Uh, um, you'll see in the pictures, you'll see the snakes and the corners and stuff. Those take really skilled artists. However, the kinds of things that we've been showing you can be done by anybody using the tools we told you about and, you know, and foam. Make sure that when you seal this foam, that you seal it really good. Uh, make sure you're not using flammable foam. Uh, <clears throat> you don't want any fires because there's certain kinds of foam that'll just burst into flames. <laughs> Okay, you want to use non-flammable foam or foam that doesn't burn. Uh, make sure that you take all the safety precautions, you know, so you don't get burned or um, anything like that. Don't leave hot wire stuff or, you know, uh, on, you know, near things. You, you'll cause a fire. So we hope that you've learned a lot from this video. And now for a montage of some of our finished works here at the darkness using foam. Thanks a lot for getting this video. And make sure you ch keep checking hauntedhousesupplies.com for more videos to help you build the ultimate attraction. Make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell ding 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 so you can get notifications because we're uploading all kinds of new content not content from 15 years ago but content that is relevant today and you know these videos that I'm uploading a lot of them are still very relevant I've had a lot of comments about that so leave a comment let us know what you thought of this video tell us what you think is different today so thanks for watching and until next time, pleasant screams. For scary videos and more, subscribe to our YouTube page, HuntWorld.com.